Welcome in to Purple Daily. Phil Mackey, Judd Zolgad, Declan Goff is producing, and it's time for the fifth installment of Kirk or Blank, gentlemen. You like that? You like that? We've gone through Baker Mayfield, Matt Ryan, Matthew Stafford, Big Ben, Jimmy G, Sam Darnold, Teddy Bridgewater, Josh Allen, Tom Brady, Joe Burrow, and Dak Prescott in this game already. We still have plenty of quarterbacks on the board, and this is the way it works. We do three for each installment, or two or three of them, and we're looking at a three-year window, which is the duration of Kirk's contract with the Vikings. He's 32 years old, average cap hit of $32 million, and the comparable quarterbacks are also tied to their current contract. So if you make the swap, if you want to go to the other quarterback, uh, we, we assume that you would have done this before the 2020 free agency year. So you, if you free up money, for instance, by going from Kirk Cousins to you know, blank, cheaper quarterback. Maybe you could sign Jadeveon Clowney. Maybe you could sign an offensive lineman or something. You guys ready for the for the next three here? Oh, yeah. You got it. All right. We'll start with this one. Kirk Cousins or Derek Carr, 29 years old, average cap hit of $21 million between 2020 and 2022. So 29, cap hit of $21 million. A lot less money than Kirk Cousins. Judd Zolgat. Of these three, the next two that you're going to give me are as easy as I've gotten for choices, okay? This one, if you look at the numbers and you look at the salary cap and you look at the ages, because I know the initial inclination is to say, oh, Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, and Derek Carr. But if you look at what Derek Carr has done and what Derek Carr did last year statistically and, and the fact that he is a tick younger than Kirk Cousins, it tips the scales a little bit and it begins to get me thinking and I'm thinking mm. to myself oh. and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? This is not nearly as simple as I thought. Judd, this is very difficult. And then we have the hammer of the conversation and that involves our friends at um, overthecap.com, okay? And if you look at over the cap and these these quarterbacks are both signed through 2022, okay? So the cap hits are similar uh, in, in fact, uh, Kirk Cousins' cap hit for the 2020 season is $21 million. Derek Carr's cap hit for the uh, 2020 season is $21.5 million. Well, well I'm, but I'm telling you, the average cap hit right, right, right. But for I'm, the next three is 32. Right, right. But, I'm, but I'm telling you that I went, down, I went in and broke down even more so because I'm making a decision for my ball, by my ball club here. Um, anyway, long story short taking everything that these guys have done, taking their age, and then taking what happens, not with the average cap hit, my good man, but what happens with the actual um, dead money that I eventually have. Oh, so you're already looking to just, like, get rid of these guys. I am. Well, I'm just looking at, I, because I Are you I trying to subvert them, the rules of Kirk or Blank yeah, right now? I, I de- wait, 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 wait. You like that? You like that? I de- Are you trying to subvert I this? I deem them to be so close in how this works because statistically I can't I can't be like this guy is superior. You don't get to just cut these quarterbacks and draft Trevor Lawrence after tanking, okay? Like it's Kirk or Blank is what it is. <laughs> I'm going with Derek Carr and here's why. Oh. Because even if even if you take the average cap hit, the dead money in 2022 as far as my decision making process goes in two very similar quarterbacks on Derek Carr's contract is zero dollars. Zero dollars. What I'm telling you is contractually, Derek Carr's contract becomes more favorable than Kirk Cousins' contract. Sure. Derek Carr is slightly younger. Derek Carr um, and Kirk Cousins are very similar in what they can do statistically. So just given that fact that I begin to gain more freedom on the Derek Carr contract, which I which I value and I like, I'm going Derek Carr. Very difficult, though. This was as difficult probably as far as a neck-and-neck neck horse race as we've had so far on Kirk or Blank. This was very tough. So for you, it's mostly just about the contract and less about their actual play as, the, as the quarterbacks? Fa- the fact is the actual play and the statistical output of these two as quarterbacks is so close that I couldn't split it based on that. Do I think that either one of these quarterbacks is going to win a Super Bowl? My answer is no. I think they are neck and neck. This was this I thought was going to be simple, and it was far tougher. Declan, I don't know if it's because it's just the Oakland Raiders, but I I do not buy Derek Carr for a second. I think he's a below average quarterback. Even if you take until the one season he was really good, right? He went twelve and three, and then he shredded his knee. I think in week seventeen or whatever it was. Take out that season, just for a little bit here, for 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 the purposes of this exercise. Take out that season. 
And that guy is 27 and 52 as a starter. He's not a good quarterback. He's not a winner. He doesn't average a lot of yards per attempt. Last year, it was a career high. I don't see what, what all the fuss is about with Derek Carr. He had one pop-up season, and outside of that, has been bunk, and he's super overpaid. The word bunk is an underrated yes, this word, too. it is. I, I'm not getting down with Derek Carr at all. I think he <laughs> makes the Vikings worse, and I don't want anything to do with him. I'm with John Gruden. I, I, I know there's been some like butting ahead of that. I would be cutting bait on Derek Carr immediately if I can. Judd's plan is not far off there, but give me Kirk Cousins eight days a week over Derek Carr. So uh, I like I like where Judd's going in terms of, all right, if I don't really love Derek Carr, but I can get out from his contract, do I make the swap? Like you could, you know, just for 2020, you could save an extra $11 million and maybe apply that. To, you know, what do you have, like $7 million in cap space right now? That might be enough to go get you a Jadeveon Clowney. Yep. It might, it's certainly enough to get you a reliable league average free agent cornerback if you go back and look at some of the guys that were available. Yep. So so that factors into. I don't think there's any question about who the better quarterback is. I think it's Kirk Cousins. Uh, you know, D- Derek Carr. There's a lot of a lot of the same things you can knock Kirk Cousins for. You can knock Derek Carr for. Like the guy yeah. doesn't do a lot late in big games, or he doesn't win big games. It's remarkably close. I was the, really surprised. The Raiders aren't really in primetime games very often. I will right. say, according to Pro Football Focus, last year Kirk Cousins was the fourth overall graded quarterback, behind only Tannehill, Russell Wilson, and Drew Brees, and. Um, and Derek Carr was eighth. No, I'm oh. sorry, the eighth, eighth in passing grade. But because he's Place basically has like cement blocks tied to his legs. <laughs> in fact, Kirk, this is one of the rare guys that Kirk Cousins might be more mobile than Derek. He might be more mobile than Derek mm-hmm. Carr. Uh, Derek Carr was 14th last year, and Derek Carr, by almost every measurement, has been a below average quarterback outside of that 2016 season. The Declan references literally the only saving grace here would be saving money and applying it to something else. But I think there's enough of a gap between how good these two quarterbacks are. And I also question like quarterback wins as a stat should not be taken as gospel because obviously like if you have the Patriots infrastructure versus the Raiders infrastructure, you're just going to have more wins. I am not comparing Derek Carr to Tom Brady. Uh, But at the same time, quarterback is such an influential position that you should be able to do better than the 39 and 55 record that he has in his career, uh, and then you take away the big 12-3 and three season like like Declan did. So all of this is to say it's a little close because of the contract. I also just stick with Kirk Cousins here. I stick with Kirk Cousins. I just – I also don't think – if you got Derek Carr, I don't think you're going to be bad enough to get, like, the number two overall pick with right. this Vikings roster. The Raiders are a mess. That That's my problem. But the Vikings too. aren't a mess. Right, right. But I, I think if you put Derek Carr into the infrastructure here, he goes up. That's the thing, too. Like And it, the yeah. numbers here – the numbers are far – Closer and and I will go back to this. I don't think either of these guys has the stomach to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, it's I don't know on Kirk. I know that Kirk doesn't have the stomach of a Tom Brady. Yeah, I don't think but Kirk does, has but, it in but, but, but like Joe Flacco I think would Kirk, be regarded as a guy who has the stomach of a Tom Brady either, and he's got a ring. I, I think Kirk has it in him to win a ring circa two thousand for sure. If defenses could win you a Super Bowl still, I think he's got it. Can can they not win you a Super Bowl? Though? I don't think they can. I don't. I I think the rules are so stacked um, against you that I think it becomes very tough. I don't know. Do Do you think that we're going to see the Ravens, the Dilfer Ravens again? Well, we we. I, we, I mean, at we, some point in time, we might. But do you think in the near future? You could make a case that we sort of saw them. With the Broncos team that won the Super Bowl, like we think of like the Peyton Manning Broncos era, they didn't win a Super Bowl when Peyton was at his peak. They won a Super Bowl when Peyton had an arm hanging by a labrum thread and was throwing, you know, end over end passes. Don't have to tell me that. The Von Miller defense wasn't that wasn't the Ravens. It wasn't on that level. It was damn good. But like that defense basically carried the Broncos. It feels to me like we're getting farther from that right now. Yeah, it's definitely harder to do that now than it was in 2000. And for the Vikings to do it, they need to get better defensively. Sure. So, you right. like that? That was a good one, though. You like that? All right, these like we're going through all the quarterbacks, so some of these are going to be a little bit more no-brainers, and maybe this next one is a no-brainer, but he's part of the exercise. Kirk Cousins or Russell Wilson? They're both 32 years old. Average cap hit, excuse me, for Cousins is $3 million less per year. So you, you save $3 million less to the cap. Uh, on average, the next three years, it's right. thirty-two million for Cousins and thirty-five million for Russell Wilson. So, 
Breaking the bank for your starting quarterback has become almost mandatory if that guy has any success at all. And I will just add to that point, yeah. Russell Wilson cap hit is the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. So so with the majority or or uh, a, a large amount of QBs, I think you can logically have a debate of, well, he's really good and it's, you know, but is this a wise contract? But I believe there's probably three or four guys. Mahomes is in the conversation of, if you have to pay them, you just pay them, you bite the bullet, and uh, keep them as your quarterback. And Russell Wilson is in that camp for me. This is not tough. This is not tough. I know I'm paying more. Uh, he's not a young man now at this point. But if you told me tomorrow, hey, Russell Wilson is going to join the Vikings, I would say, damn, this team might have a chance. They are the favorite. Yeah. So yeah. Russell Wilson, to me, th this is a complete no-brainer in the sense of Kirk or Russell. I will take Russell 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, give, give me Russell Wilson. I think Russell Wilson is a top three quarterback in the league, and even though that cap hit is insane, it's justifiable if you are indeed one of the top three quarterbacks in the league. Like, Kirk Cousins makes a, a pretty penny, but at the end of the day, when we do our rankings, you know, as we've done even last week, he's really only maybe ninth or eighth on the very, very best day and the most bullish of optimistic. So I, I, I would take Russell Wilson 100%. I think he's exact. He would be able also to be able to move around in an offensive line that's going to be causing him to run for his life a little bit too. Give me Russell Wilson all day. Yep, the answer here is Russell Wilson. So but he, he is part of the exercise. But I just will add another thing here to the discussion. Because the NFL is a salary cap league, and because right now the salary cap is like 100, whatever, 190, 200 million dollars. Let's just round it up to 200 million dollars for mm -hmm. for the sake of this discussion. When you have a guy that is as good as Russell Wilson, who I think is the second best quarterback in the NFL behind Pat Mahomes, when you have a guy that's that good, he's mobile still at age 32. It's you know he's not running for 800 yards like he did in his second or third year, but like he can he can escape pressure, he can keep plays alive. And, and he can improvise down the field. A play isn't just over if your right tackle gets beat. When the right tackle, when Brian O'Neill gets beat for the Vikings, the play is over, right? Like it's either a sack or Kirk has to move up and like and throw a pass really quick. There's not or he there's, fumbles or he fumbles, which is which is a thing too. Sure. Uh, so when when you're paying roughly the same amount of money as a franchise for Russell Wilson as you are for Kirk Cousins, yep. Think about how much of an advantage you have as a general manager. When you're building the rest of your roster, all right, these two guys make about 30, 30 and a half million dollars. One of them is very much better than the other and helps your team more than the other one. Even though like Kirk Cousins is very good, mm -hmm. um, it, it just makes your job easier if you're the Seattle front office versus the Vikings front office to fill out the rest of your roster. So like it's not as imperative that you have an amazing offensive line when Russell Wilson Russell is your Wilson's starting quarterback. Worth it. He is. Just flat yeah, out, he's worth, he's worth it. it. So, all right. You like that? You like that? All right, we're going to go down this road because a lot of people have considered this guy, if he was given a chance, could be a starting quarterback who is maybe even above average or a star because of what we've seen in small sample sizes. Kirk Cousins or Taysom Hill. So Taysom Hill is 30 years old. His cap hit for 2020 is actually just $4.5 million. His average cap hit for the next two years is about $10 million. They backloaded it for 2021, and I think they can get out from underneath it. But but for the sake of this conversation, average cap hit of around 9 or $10 million for the next two years, and then he becomes a free agent. He's 30 years old, and he's one of the more Swiss Army Knife type players you're going to find at that position. Judd Zilgad. This is not tough. Kirk Cousins. Uh, he saved $20 million. Though. Well, wait, wait. The one thing I will say is this. Taysom Hill... If I had an offensive-minded head coach who I thought this is a quarterback whisperer type, I might be like, you know what? You save a lot on, on the cap. That's a good gamble. But but Taysom Hill played under Mike McCarthy's nose in Green Bay for a year or two, I believe. And Mike McCarthy never – and he is an offensive mind. Make your jokes about him. He's had some success. Mike McCarthy never used Taysom Hill like Sean Payton has. Now – Peyton, back to our conversation from a day or two ago, is a very good offensive-minded coach, and he uses Taysom Hill, as, as the Vikings saw in their playoff game, as a really effective, at times, gimmick QB. But do I think that can translate to full-time starting success? I have no clue, and with, the Vi and with the Vikings' current coaching construction, I'm not going to ask Gary Kubiak to do that. So maybe if you had Sean McVay or Shanahan, I might be like, that's a good gamble. In the Vikings' case, absolutely not. 
this is as simple for me as saying Wilson over Cousins is to say Cousins over Taysom Hill. I, I like the idea of Taysom Hill, and I, I think if you put him in the right infrastructure, he could be a successful quarterback. But if, if you're going to swap and put him in a Mike Zimmer scheme and with Kubiak, I, I just I don't know. There's a lot of red flags there. If, if you have someone like Sean Payton or even like Doug Peterson, if you put Taysom Hill on the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm honestly generally curious. I'm, I'm, I really want to see what he would be able to do. But if I'm looking at the Vikings and if their window is closing a bit but still open and still propped open, I'm, I'm taking my chance with Kirk Cousins and not Taysom Hill. All right, I'm going to admit to you guys that I only put Taysom Hill on this list out of spite so I could rip him. All right. Nice. Okay. And so I could rip the concept of people thinking that he's a starting quarterback. And like when his name's out there in free agency, oh, could could someone give him $15, $20 million so dollars to done, be a starting this quarterback? This was done for. This is done purely out yeah. of Vikings Saints spite right now. Okay. So Taysom Hill is 30 years old. This dude's been in the NFL for parts of four seasons, mostly with the pack- Saints. He was okay? a Packer, man. He was a Packer for like an off season. I'm pretty sure I don't think he was a Packer for very long because he it was like the oh. 2017 or 16 offseason or something. Okay, but so he's mostly been with Mike McCarthy and Sean Payton, two of the greatest offensive mi- well, one of the greatest <laughs> offensive minds, and Mike McCarthy. Yeah, who's an offensive yeah. mind though? Like <laughs> right. he should see this for sure. Uh, and at age 30 in the NFL to this point, he has thrown a total of 13 NFL passes. 13 NFL passes. Now he's had some run in in training camp and also in preseason. So, okay, you go back. All right, where's all this steam coming from then? Like, I get that the guy can line up outside and get the ball on a reverse and, like, throw the ball down the field in a trick play, and that's great. But where's all this, like, actual starting quarterback steam coming from? And I thought to myself, well, I mean, he must have been awesome in college, right? The guy must have just been a stud in college. I didn't really follow him, but sure, for sure, this dude, like, for everyone to be talking about Taysom Hill as a potential starting quarterback, can't wait to see this guy's college numbers. My God. Uh, wait a second. He was a... A fifth-year senior who uh, I think he might have had a medical red shirt or something, but he was a fifth-year senior at BYU, okay? So he's one of the older quarterbacks in college football in 2016, one of the more experienced quarterbacks in college football in 2016. Mm -hmm. And he's playing against teams like Toledo, Cincinnati, Southern Utah. They were an independent, BYU. Uh, UMass, Utah State. Yep. They did play West Virginia, Michigan State, Mississippi State. They played some. They played some decent teams. He winds up completing fewer than sixty percent of his passes, twelve touchdowns, eleven interceptions, and an average yards per attempt of six. This is a well, political as a agenda. Year, That's what this is a political. This is very Trumpian. So Taysom Hill is not a starting. Quarterback. You're holding an anti-Taysom Hill rally. <laughs> On our time. I can see what's going on This would here. be if the Vikings decided to put Jarek McKinnon back yeah. in the day oh. under center oh, as their wait, starting wait, wait. quarterback. Can we, I'd trust Jarek can McKinnon we, to be the Vikings quarterback over Taysom Hill. Let's, oh, wow. break, let's break down possibly, <laughs> and I'm not joking, let's break down possibly the ugliest pass I ever have seen come off the arm of a Vikings player. That's fair enough. Okay. It might be the I might year. Have, I might have stepped a little too far. It right. might be the pass that Jarek McKinnon threw. When lined up in the Wildcat, I believe at U.S. Bank Stadium, who Dex was that oh, against? Yeah. God. That and that li- that is I, I've seen a lot of bad passes. That I think is the ugliest pass, I, I, and I include McNabb hopping balls to poor Vasante Shanko. Right? I include ponder throws. I'll even give you Josh Freeman in the Meadowlands. I Oof. think that McKinnon pass might be the <laughs> ugliest that. single pass I've ever seen Listen, thrown. There was a uh, th- there was a window open. It was there in was 2016 a... because he only has one passing attempt in his career. Can in you NFL. find who it was against or no? Sure. What, st- what, what stadium was it in? It was in 2016 Here. at U.S. Bank. Stadium. At US Bank I, don't, stadium. I don't know the stadium. That's when they didn't have the window panels yet, though. There was gusts <laughs> yeah. of wind coming. I well, mean... that's what Josh Freeman's excuse was in the Meadowlands, right? <laughs> yeah, it's super it windy. windy. I don't know what to do. Sorry, it's not my fault that I sucked. <laughs> so, so the answer is Kirk Cousins over Taysom Hill. Just to be clear, it happened yep. uh, against Dallas when Dallas came to town. Dallas. That Thursday night football game. Thursday night game. Wow. Yep. All the throwbacks, or are they not? Uh, I'm no, sorry, the, the color rush. Color rush. The color rush jerseys. <laughs> Taysom Hill, too, um, undrafted in 2017, signed as a free agent after the draft by the Packers, who kept him in the preseason through like three games. He actually got in, and Mike McCarthy then released him. Yeah. So that's what Mike McCarthy thought of Taysom Hill's ability as a quarterback. He didn't even get to. The uh, the start of the season before being 
released by and the Of Packers. course, to his credit and to Sean Payton's credit, he is in a perfect role yeah. with the Saints. Well, and gimmick player, yeah. handoffs. It, and the Vikings had problems stopping him. So I don't have the exact it's video, but it did happen in the second quarter on Minnesota's 47-yard line. Jarek McKinnon yes. pass incomplete, deep right, intended for Kyle Rudolph. I just remember thinking that's <laughs> one bad. of the ugliest passes I've ever seen. Because we all thought to ourselves, why don't you ever have Jarek McKinnon pass from the Wildcat? And then he threw that pass, and we all said, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was the emergency quarterback for the Vikings until that game. Yeah. <laughs> then, oh, God. That was then they bad. were like, eh, let's, eh. let's make a— Do you know who, who had some touch? Sidney Rice. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sidney Rice could throw a pass. Yeah. He we, threw a couple, and he had touch. Maybe that's Poor our Jack. next pecking order. No touch. Sidney Rice. Non-quarterbacks who have the best passing touch for the Vikings. You have to go, go through The Vikings, the, the guy— Chris Cluey? The guy who claimed— No, no, no. The guy who claimed that he was the Vikings' third-string quarterback, and I believe it was 2005, you won't be surprised by this one. Your good friend Darren Sharper. Oh, really? He claimed he claimed in the oh. locker room one day that if um, Culpepper and Brad Johnson both had gotten hurt at that point, that he would be the quarterback. Well, maybe we can ask him on the new podcast we're going to launch with Darren Sharper called One Call a Week here oh, God. on Purple Daily. <laughs> you like that? You like that? All right, that's a wrap on this episode. <laughs> that was good. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time on Purple Daily.